show me buying the panels or anything like that because I'm not going to. But um, I went to Lowe's, got me this panel for 23 bucks. It was a eight by four. I had them cut it for me. I just did the measurements and it was just two cuts, cut at the top and a straight cut in half. Um, so that'll get me my two feet wide and one board will get me for both sides of this rack. And the neat thing is, as you can see, in the time lapse, all I had to do was drill a hole, buy these bolts, and bolt it in. I did not want to have to screw it in. So I wanted this thing to be able to be dismantled, as I said earlier. So having bolts instead of screws make that a lot easier for me. And I'm actually gonna take this panel off right now. So I can take it out to the garage and primer it so I can get, re get it ready to paint. Um, so I only did the four bolts for now, just so I can get it held up. And then I'm gonna have three more bolts in the middle. Now I did kind of warp in the middle here, so it has like a little slant going in, which is a lot more noticeable on the bottom, on the bottom section there. You can see there's a little bit of a warp there. Um, not concerned with it on the bottom shelf because that's gonna be for the tortoise. And the tortoise is gonna be in an aerated environment. So I'm not gonna worry about even sealing that. Matter of fact, I might be adding some more um, air holes to this for the tortoise. Now for the snakes, for the snake enclosures, I will be foaming this and just sealing that with a, with a simple foam. That'll keep the humidity in for me and just kind of, you know, remove that, that gap. And I'll probably just kind of go ahead and foam up the entire square inside. Just kind of foam it all the way up and all the way around. And I'm gonna do foam instead of silicone because the foam can just break off. If I ever decide to dismantle this, I can just break off the foam, scrape it off and be done with it. So that's that. I'm gonna go ahead and continue working here. Um, you can see in the background, I have two tanks set up. There is a Repticon coming up soon. So I might get me something from the Repticon that will be going in these slacks here. So I remember I was looking for a uh, Florida king snake, and I'm also looking for a rainbow boa and blue tongue snake right up there. So that's what these shelvings are planned for. And since the likelihood is I'll be getting babies, they won't be fitting in here at the moment that I get them. They won't fit in here as babies. So I got some little grow out tanks prepared for baby snakes. All right, guys, that's it for now. Keep working. Alright guys, we're back. This is as far as we got yesterday. 
And then I started playing with the Kawabanga action figures. So we got the two side panels. Oh well, we got two side panels drilled. This side panel is out um, drying from the paint. That one's on, the back panel is on. The back panel is just the regular plywood. So right now, what's left to do is bring in the other panel and go ahead and seal that. And I am also trying to identify and plan out the front side of the enclosure now and kind of visualize how I'm gonna do the the doors to this thing. So I don't know if I wanna have kind of a stand here for the substrate to sit on or to sit level with. And then kind of have the railing for the sliding glass doors on top. Or sit the railing in and have this board sit in the back. That'll give me you know, that much more visual space into the enclosure. And I'm kind of being very picky on how much visual space I have going into the enclosure, so I think I might go with <coughs> this option here and go with the bigger glass. And this back section here can just rest here like this in between the substrate and this rail, keep it there. Um, kind of debating that option. Don't know yet. But anyways, that's for later. Next thing is to get that panel in here, put that on. Um, one of the things I am considering doing is replacing this panel one section higher uh, for what will eventually be the blue tongue skin. So his, the height on this one is very low, which is okay for the blue tongue. But now that we're going to add substrate in here and you know possibly a railing for the glass, that's not really a whole lot of visual space into his enclosure. Um, and it might look it, but you can see, I'm a very tall person. So, I mean, I'll just barely be you know, eye, eye level with the, with the actual um, substrate itself. So I'm thinking something a little bit lower than this for the railing and to have the railing sit flat, have the substrate kind of at an incline and then give this a little bit more space up top. The reason why it's low right now and not sitting way up here is because eventually I was going to have something sit on top. Um, but now I don't really know what I might have up here because, again, I don't know. It, cannot, it can't be a terrestrial species because I'll never see the thing. So it would have to be an arboreal species that sits on this top railing. It would have to be an arboreal species. So that, you know, we can actually see the thing. But, I don't know if, if I'll ever actually put anything up there. It's kind of tall and I would need a, um, what's it called? I need a step stool to get up there to do maintenance and feeding and everything else. So I don't know if I'm going to get that involved. Um, but, that wouldn't be for a few years down the line anyway, so. Not a problem right now. I think I'm going to go ahead and lift that one, one notch up. Because if it is going to be an arboreal species that's up there, I'm not going to ever do a terrestrial species. Even at this height, I can't see them on there. If they're on the floor... I'm never going to see it. So it's not going to matter if it's here or here. Um, I'm not going to see the terrestrial species. And if it's an arboreal species, again, it's not going to matter because they're going to always sit a little bit higher in the visual space. So I'm going to go ahead and lift that up a notch. Um, and again, that's why I think this little, these type of rack system is awesome because, I mean, I have two boards on here already set. <coughs> you know, the floor is set. I'm able to kind of visualize the spacing and make adjustments as I need. If I was creating this as a, as a box and I was just setting up boxes, then this would probably already be a, um, a ledge a wooden ledge screwed into this here, right? And this bottom floor right here probably screwed in on top. Um, and that would be a lot more difficult to get removed and try to adjust the space on that. You'd probably have wood cut, you know, for that exact height and so on and so forth. So a lot of times you make your measurements, you know, and you're like, that's fine for a blue tongue. That's all the space I need. Well, you know, other things might come into place. And so, and I'm that type of person where I'll make a measurement three times and be like, yay, that's exactly what I want. And then 12 hours later, I'm like, eh, you know what? Probably could have done something else. So having a system like this where I can just unbolt this back section right here, so what I'm gonna do right now is I'm gonna take this bolt out and loosen up this back so that I can get the rivets on. So you can see it's not, you know, it's tight right now because it's bolted. But as soon as I loosen up this bolt, this will give me a little bit of wiggle room and I'll be able to adjust this right here. And that's what I'm gonna do right now. I'm gonna give myself um, one notch more space. And then once I get that done, I will tighten these bolts back up, put the side panel on. And then I think the next step after that will be getting some of this stuff right here. Action cracks, great stuff foam, and foaming up my, my cracks. You can see there's a little bit of space in back there. I might also foam it up from the back side, from the back, um, just to get some of those little cracks sealed. 
And yeah, so we're gonna film up the edges. All right, guys. Check in a bit. I'm not going to be sealing it up today, uh, the gaps, because I don't have my lights yet, and I think I want to go ahead and drill my holes for my lights and my heaters before I actually do the foaming, so that way I can go ahead and foam, foam around the, the hole I make for the, for the cables and stuff. So I think that's enough for now. Um, again, these things won't be used for a long time, so I'm not really concerned with how long this little project takes me. We are going to go to Repticon next weekend. I already got two tanks, two spare tanks and a third, which is that size, still out in the garage. It's also still set up with um, substrate and hides in there. Um, so depending on if I actually do get a snake and the size of it, I have three different sizes. That's like a seven, it's like a seven or ten gallon. That's like, no, I think that's a, yeah, that's a ten gallon, that's like a seven gallon. And I got a twenty gallon breeder also. So if I do end up getting anything, um, a baby baby skink he can go in a 20 gallon breeder if i get a baby snake he can go in one of these two and if i if i'm lucky enough maybe i might get two things who knows they're they're at the right price so i'd be i'd be lucky to find a blue tongue skink at a good price i don't even know if i'm gonna find any brazilian rainbow boas hopefully and then that guy right there would be a, a king snake i'm pretty sure i'll find florida king snakes at a florida repticon that should be pretty obvious so we'll see probably a king snake that's kind of what I'm going in there um, with the expectation of, um, unless I find a really good, or any, um, Brazilian rainbow boas at a good price. And then if I find a blue tongue skink at a really good price, we'll see. We'll see what I'm able to make out with. Alright, until the next time I'm ready to prep some of this and build some of it out, I'll check you out next time. <laughs>